Greetings. Uh, we will present to you today uh, topics about sleeve gastrectomy leaks and its in the lumen our approach or understanding it, how it happens. That first part, uh, we will try to show you uh, uh, the incidence of uh, the sleeve leaks, what part it happens, and uh, the, th the trends them to, to become chronic. And also, we will try to build a rationale of pathophysiology in why it is happening uh, on the procedure that was uh, designed to be technically simple, of taking down the greater curvature, uh, the vessels of the greater curvature, and then stapling vertically over a bougie that will work like a row from the entering the direction of the his angle. Uh, and what is the pitfalls and details that uh, contributes this to happen and to become chronic. So, uh, let's start the presentation. And then uh, uh, I have the pleasure to introduce you uh, the group uh, I proudly work with and what we have done in the last 15 years about uh, bariatric endoscopy since the terms were, was created. Uh, two textbooks, now going to the third textbooks written about that, and more than 70 peer-reviewed papers just about bariatric endoscopy was done with the group that you see on your screen. So, sleep astectomy leaks, or fistula, and what should be our endoluminal approach or treatment for that. But before jumping to that, let me show you this very uh, interesting chart that it is inside uh, of a paper from Cleveland Clinic, Dr. Stace Breathauer and Dr. Phil Schauer group. And you can see here on this chart, and if you guide your eyes to the red part, and then you're going to see two uh, main columns. Uh, the first one is high-risk patients submitted to a staged procedure, and the second, on more on the right, is the primary procedure. Uh, so, why bring this uh, to the table? Is uh, exactly that the information we had that the sleeve gastrectomy uh, uh, leaks can occur due to uh, the bougie side, they were already uh, there. And let me explain you how, why. Uh, the high-risk patients in stage procedures, they tend on the literature to be done over uh, 40 to 60 French bougies. And the ones in, in primary procedure, they tend to be a more narrow tube uh, between 32 and 36 French. And you can see here, uh, what is highlighted in red, is that the high-risk patients have 1.2% of leak rate. And if you go to the other side, you have 2.7%, more than double, uh, in the patients submitted to primary procedure. And the main difference is the bougie side. And uh, we what we could anticipate is high-risk patients should have more problems, like more leaks. And what you see here is that the one submitted to primary procedure that uh, theoretically has a better health have more leaks. So this was from the beginning, and this is the, the paper that uh, allowed the ASMBS uh, to approve the sleep gastrectomy as a solo bariatric procedure. Our group, as you can see here, uh, on this chart, in orange, uh, we have bands, so it peaked in 2001, then it goes down. Then in green, you see the, the left bypass, and it grows and stay kind of stable. And in gray, uh, we see our sleeve gastrectomy uh, numbers. And you can see here in 2008, we have a drop on that. At that time, uh, we are losing the battle, and it leads us to our very recent publication, uh, but it was from our very early uh, patients that was referred to us with uh, chronic sleeve uh, leaks. And we were surprised for that amount of patients, that's why we stopped in 2008, until we, we figured out uh, how to deal with that. So you can see that by the colors here, uh, that this uh, paper presents you with uh, 12 patients that had a mean uh, 
time from the uh, zebrastrectomy to the treatment of 16 months and uh, around five sessions of endoscopy and the operative times five hours and length of stay uh, around uh, six days. It means it was a very challenging operation to do a total gastrectomy due to the chronic leaks and what we are trying to use before the traditional endoluminal approach had failed uh, on these patients. And you can see also here that uh, most of the leaks are on the proximal third and it can account to more than 75% in all of the studies presented to you. The explanation or the reasons that why uh, sleeve leaks uh, tends to become chronic if you compare like, uh, for example, for gastric bypass, or like gastric bypass leaks. So uh, we will try to explain to you uh, what we understand as pathophysiology for uh, these leaks to happen and uh, the reasons why this leak uh, keeps alive uh, and doesn't heal properly uh, after the interventions. The traditional approach uh, to understand that is that we should suture the hole of the leak or we should and also we have to drain uh, all of the abscess and peritonitis and sepsis of that and it should be healed. But uh, you can see here on your screen uh, a mold of the stomach uh, that can clearly show us that the vessels from the stomach, the arterial ones, the venous ones, they perfectly match left to right, right to left, five uh, arterial branches uh, except for one spot that is the his angle. And also some cadaver studies shows that this confirm these findings on that. Uh, it is, has three muscular layers instead of two. Uh, when you take uh, out the greater curvature, there's no stomach like an agastic bypass to block the leak. Uh, it is uh, high near the hiatus, so it is uh, it takes some of the negative pressure of the thorax, so it can keep it, uh, the leak alive. Most of those leaks are labiated, and by not having the stomach or uh, tissue to block this leak, uh, the traject of this uh, leak into the direction of the skin or into the cavity, they are by obligation, uh, they are turtles, and they are complex and long. And this all uh, contributes to to perpetrate that. Uh, and uh, one of the explanations we have, and uh, I think it's the most robust uh, explanation we have, is that after uh, we change a stomach in a sleeve gastrectomy, what we have before in the stomach is this uh, high compliance, low pressure system. By the laws of physics, when you change this to a tube shape, you're going to really uh, significantly increase the pressure. And this increase in pressure with a weak spot like the his angle will keep uh, uh, the chronicity or, or, can I say, keep the leak alive. So what we have in front of you right now is a very interesting uh, chart. So let's focus on one, the one that says HRM this high resolution manometry, is the ones that you can see colors coming from uh, blue to red. In this graph, uh, on the left side, is a pre-op situation. So we can see two uh, main uh, bars, that they are uh, horizontal bars, and the upper one, it, uh, it, it is the lower, the, sorry, the upper is a fascia sphincter. The inferior one, is the lower esophageal sphincter. And you can see here that the pressure is higher uh, on the upper uh, bar if you compare to the inferior bar. And I can say that because as more blue you see on that graph, less pressure, and more uh, red, more pressure. So you can see here in between the two bars are the swallowing, it's the peristalsis of the patient. And very important and very easy to see on that graph is that Below the lower bar, meaning the stomach, is, it is blue. 
meaning that's a very low pressure system. So let's go to the right side and you're going to see the, 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 the same high resolution, resolution manometry graph uh, taken after uh, months after the sleep extractor. And what drives our attention is that if we look for the inferior bar, the yellow one, we're going to see that that is a pressur pressur the stomach's pressurized with a, uh, a dramatic increase in a pressure. So, uh, meaning that this hyperpressive system with a weak spot uh, can explain uh, why uh, the, the sleep gastrectomy leaks on a sleep gastrectomy done on the narrow tube tends to become chronic. So, this cartoon will try to explain to us, and uh, you can see that uh, most of the times are is a twist or a narrowing between the body and the antrum, and this will impact uh, on the pressure of the fundus, forcing the his angle up to the point that it has a leak. And when you have the leak and the abscess, and even after you drain or suture, uh, it will keep this uh, in a chronic mode because this hyperpressure system uh, will keep the, the leak alive.